Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and this is going to be part four of my super ghetto strat reboot refin project on the last two episodes. Uh, first, I painted this with a layer of nail polish that I got off of Amazon. And then the episode after that, I removed all the nail polish to start over. And then I gave this thing a nice smooth spray of metallic gold spray paint um, just to be a metallic base and to kind of lock in that wood grain and make it more, uh, you know, liquid proof, I guess, for the next layer <laughs> of nail polish because that's what I'm going for. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a little obsessed with this nail polish concept right now. I want to, you know, I want to do it and get the execution that I'm going for. And I think that I can get it. Uh, I ordered seven more bottles of green. And also, uh, I took some advice. I got a lot of advice, a lot of uh, comments from people telling me the way they think I should do it. And most of them were kind of pushing in the direction of like, oh, just get rattle cans, get an airbrush, do this and that. Oh, here's the official steps on how to refinish a guitar. Those people have completely missed the point. Maybe I didn't, you know, spell out clearly what I'm trying to do here, but I'm trying to, I mean, first of all, have fun. <laughs> Second of all, explore, you know, this nail polish concept that's stuck in my head for whatever reason. Third, the overall kind of concept is that I want to find a guitar finishing technique that can be done by hand, opens up some creative possibilities, doesn't require a big loadout of tools and supplies and stuff like that. Um, and I think I'm on my way, I think I'm getting there. So anyways, uh, let's talk about a comment I got that was helpful to me. I got a comment from Kendra Simmons and she says, okay, so my husband and I like to watch your show. Okay, he watches and I'm in the room, but anyway, I have helped him over the years do minor repairs on guitars with nail polish. I would suggest you try gel polish. It will not dry until you cure it with UV light. It has a thicker, shinier finish than normal nail polish and is more similar to a poly lacquer. You will get better coverage and more control. You will need approximately three bottles, I would think, to do the whole body. It's also a self-leveling product, behaving a little bit like epoxy, so no sanding needed. I would use a gel top coat with it. Look for one that says no wipe top coat. Actually, I wouldn't use nail polish at all for an entire guitar, but since you seem to be headed that route, I thought I would give you a little nail polish insight. And then she says more. Uh, I forgot to mention, because it does not dry at all until it is cured with the light, you can swirl colors to mimic a dip top and you can remove mistakes with rubbing alcohol. You can walk away for an hour and come back to it and it still won't dry until you hit it with the light. Also, it only takes anywhere from 30 seconds to three minutes, depending on brand, to cure, and then it's ready for recoat or to play. Another nail tool to get would be a cheap four-way nail buffing block from Sally's or any other beauty supply. This works great for shining up frets and other hardware. That's the kind of comment I need for this project. It was very helpful. So I went on eBay and I got seven more bottles of the green. I might have already mentioned that. Seven more, and I also got uh, three bottles of gold, just in case I wanted to do that burst again. I think I've changed my mind. I don't want to do the burst. I want to go for like a solid color starting out. These are the gel uh, variation from the same brand that I used before. Uh, I think they were like three bucks a bottle on eBay or something like that, and you put a bunch together and you know they share shipping. I thought I was gonna be getting the same exact color as I used before, Turns out, no, it's a different color. It's more yellow. It's more, I'm gonna say that the original one was more like true green, Kelly green saturated. And this one's like more yellowish, more kind of like mustardy in some sort of way. And I have to say right away, I think I prefer this new color like a lot. Like it's almost like a rat think green. That's where I live, that's what I want. So because this color is so great, um, yeah, I don't feel an inclination to mix in that gold. Also did a little bit of a test on a piece of wood and I'm very happy with how it turned out on that wood. I really like the color a lot. So anyways, um, what else am I gonna do? I also have some nail polish remover here that I will be thinning this stuff out with a little bit if I think it needs it. Uh, another comment or series of comments to address is that people were saying I should use other brushes. I 
am an artist. I have a wide selection of brushes to work with if I wanted to. I've done painting and I've done paintings in the past. I will do paintings in the future. But I wanna keep with the theme that I'm going for here and stick to the least amount of tools available. So I wanna stick to the brush that comes in these things, even though, you know, it'll be harder, it'll take longer, but I think that's the spirit of the experiment. So let's get started. I'm just gonna start attacking this thing. I think I'm gonna do random brush strokes again. Um, I kind of liked the way it had this kind of random iridescence, like kind of like foily pattern on the first version of this. All right, let's get started. Fingers crossed, maybe I'll like it this time. These lids are really on there. I had to use a plier to loosen it. And we're off to the races. I think that looks pretty good. I'm excited. I, th I think this is gonna work out this time, guys. I think I'm gonna add that nail polish remover to thin it out. It is just gunking a little faster than I'd like. By the way, nail polish remover is just acetone. Some people might wonder why I'm even painting in this area since it's gonna be under the pit guard. And it's really just an opportunity for me to have a test area and to see how it reacts in an area that isn't terribly critical. My hope is at the end of this, I'll have a finish that doesn't need sanding, but will take a clear coat of some kind of spray finish. I don't want to brush on the clear. I want an, a sandably thick clear finish. I've done various things for that in the past. I've used uh, this triple thick spray that has worked well in the past. With a, it has a long curing time though, especially with it being thick. Um, there's this stuff called 2K that um, has like a chemical reaction. You pull a plug on the bottom of the can and everything in the can sets within a couple hours. But it means that everything that you spray out of the can sets in a couple hours too. So it's a little pricey, but I think I might go that direction just to have something that cures quickly. Still acting kind of gummy. I'm gonna throw some more acetone in there. I wonder if it's possible to put in too much acetone, if it'll make it not cure, or if it'll just keep getting thinner and thinner. Definitely feels nice when it's thinned out. I get pretty impatient <laughs> working on stuff like this. So I'm I'm having this strong like instinct to just dump the bottle out on the body and work it around. But that's what got me in trouble last time with the thick paint on the back, with the gloopiness, with just inconsistent results altogether. So I'm just gonna keep brushing it. Just take my time. Try to channel the spirit of Bob Ross right now. <laughs> I think she was right about getting full coverage out of about three bottles, especially adding the acetone and thin thinning it out a bit. It's covering quite a bit.
So this is about the half hour mark, if you're wondering how long it takes to do this. I just thinned out the paint again. I'm getting pretty low in this bottle, I think. It's hard to tell because it's dark in there, but I'm definitely having to reach down pretty low with the brush. So far, very happy with the results. It's not perfectly flat. It's not doing the self-leveling thing like the, uh, the comment said it might. I have a feeling if I thinned it out a lot, it might do that. But like I said earlier, I kind of enjoyed the brush effect on my first attempt. It gave a really neat quality to the iridescence. So I'm not too upset about that. And I'm hoping that any clear coat I put on this will be sandably smooth to give the guitar a smooth finish. And I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel with this jar. I'm gonna move on to a fresh one. Yeah, that's better right away. I'm having a curiosity that if I mix a really rich batch with a ton of acetone, if I can use it to smooth out the rough bits. I don't think it's really worth it though. Should I try to paint the sides right now? No, I'm gonna go put it out in the sun. I'm gonna let it set up a little bit. I'm gonna have lunch. And uh, then we'll attack it some more after it sets for an hour or so. I really love the way this looks in the sunlight. Just that shimmer is pretty fantastic. I think that looks pretty dang good. It looks really stunning out in the sunlight. I love the color. It has a textural element to it, but because it's consistent throughout, it looks intentional. And uh, it just catches the light in a really fun way. Kind of like a brushed aluminum, brushed steel kind of look when the light is catching it right. It's set up real nice to the touch with about an hour of sunlight. Now I need to paint the back and the sides. I want to figure out... Hmm... I need a good way to prop it up. I think I'll be fine with putting some tape rolls underneath it, pickguard area, and not have to worry about, uh, you know, indentations and stuff like that if the paint still is a little bit soft. I might want to go for a super thin down extra coat on top of this just to finish it off after I get the back and the sides set up. But I'll do that off video. You guys don't need to see those results. I'm gonna have to buy my wife a new container of a uh, nail polish remover after this. Oops, overfilled that. I have an issue that's a little bit of a bummer up here. When I was heat gunning this, the wood bubbled up and separated. I'm gonna try to razor it and put a little wood glue under there and hopefully that'll, uh, that'll solve the issue. I don't really have 
a good way to hold it down is the problem. It's going to look a little funny, but I've got, I need something flat and heavy, and I've got this old meat cleaver here just hanging around the garage. I'm going to put a little bit more glue in there. And then hopefully that'll hold it down and it'll cure flat. Fingers crossed on that one. All right. This stuff is going to be pretty liquidy, hopefully. Yeah. This coat seems to be going a lot quicker. Maybe because the guitar is warmed up from the sun or I just put the right amount of nail polish remover, enough acetone in the mix. It's going on a lot smoother. Or maybe I'm going thinner. I don't know. Or my, my brush technique has improved. Maybe time just flies when you're having fun. Right, guys? <laughs> All right, time to check underneath the cleaver. See if I got the result I wanted. It's not perfect, but uh, it's not popping up anymore either. It is what it is. I don't want it. I think the uh, the acetone definitely stretches out the supply, which should not be a surprise. All right, on to the sides. Good thing I have an adjustable table here to get this up closer to eye level. Otherwise, I could really hurt my back doing this, bending over to paint the sides. Up she goes. I love this table. I've never had it all the way up before. This is amazing. All right, that'll work. Man, I love this color. Such a cool color. I can't believe I got this color on accident. Like this is a color that I would like engineer for myself or mix for myself.
think I'm going to open a fourth bottle. Just because I don't want to fight with the dregs. I've got seven bottles. Why make a fight out of it? And this is sloppy. Whatever. I mean, this guitar is far from perfect. So I'm not going to stress it too much. And if you overheat the wood with a uh, with a hot air gun, you can get it to bubble, and that's exactly what happened there. A bit of a bummer. I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet, but uh, I'm not a perfectionist. I kind of like that at certain angles, you can really see the wood grain and all the little random cuts and out there sandpaper marks and stuff like that. This is not going to be, you know, a guitar that's mistaked for a commercial finish when it's done. And that wasn't my goal. And I kind of like the home done charm that I'm seeing so far. It's got soul to it. While also still being pretty sparkly and fun. No matter what I'm doing, I always hate working in these cutaways. Painting, sanding, stripping paint away, it's always a pain in the ass. Maybe that's why some people love offsets so much. They don't have as many of these deep cutaways. Some would say none. A very slight cutaway in a Jaguar. Jazzmaster kind of shape, but not these deep cuts like you get on a Strat. All right, I'm gonna let it rest as is. It's about two hours of work represented right here. Um, I'm gonna let it cure out in the sun and uh, I'll revisit it in the next video. Uh, I'll probably do plenty of touch-ups before the next video. I have a feeling that under edge right there uh, didn't get hit well enough at all with me painting the sides with the, the top down. Um, but I'm pretty happy with the coverage I've got so far. I'm not sure I'll do a second coat. I don't think it needs it. I'm really happy with the way the gold metallic worked underneath all this. I think it really helped it a lot. And, uh, I'm pretty excited to, uh, be able to put this guitar together. Uh, next video will probably be me doing clear coat stuff on it. And then hopefully sanding it and polishing it smooth. Um... And then the video after that, hopefully putting it together. I mean, I keep crossing my fingers in this video, but that's what I'm hoping for. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me a rude, nasty comment. Support us on Patreon. Blah, blah, blah. Buy a shirt. Use my Amazon affiliate links, my Sweetwater affiliate links, my eBay affiliate links, my Reverb.com affiliate links, all the affiliate links. Those help me out more than you know, and you don't have to wait until... I've got a link for something you want to buy. Click the link and go search for the thing you want to buy and I'll get a cut. That's the way that stuff works as long as you do it within 24 hours or whatever. Um, it's the easiest and like biggest no-brainer way to help out the channels that you love and the channels you want to support is just by using their affiliate links on stuff you were going to buy anyways. All right, I'm going to go take this thing out to cure. Uh, stay grounded. Bye, everybody.